Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions instructional videos today. It's more hydrology and water resources education. This is part two in our series going over the basics of what water resources engineering is, what that includes, and uh, some of the things you're going to come across. So we're very excited for uh, this portion of the series here. So a little bit about Clear Creek Solutions. It was founded in 2005 by Joe Brasher and Doug Byerline. And we do a variety of software development, uh, hydrology modeling, and stormwater modeling. We have 60 plus years of experience between those senior members, and we developed the Western Washington Hydrology Model for the counties of Western Washington, as well as numerous software packages for states along the West Coast and across the entire country. So that's a little background on Clear Creek Solutions. You can go to clearcreeksolutions.info to learn more. Anyways, let's get into the lessons. This is part two on water resources engineering. What is water resources engineering? It's important to break it down. What are we dealing with here? And uh, what are the aspects of design when it comes to water resources engineering? Well, we know that water is controlled and regulated to serve a wide variety of purposes in our society. So if you think about the how much water is used in things, water is used in basically everything, in almost every form of industry and in every form of life. It is also vital to our own survival, for humanity's survival. So water is very important. And how we control it and use it in our societies and our designs is going to be incredibly critical. You think about any industry that requires water. Um, you know, water is used to transport goods. It's used to even you know drill for oil in, in some industries. It's used to, uh, you know, feed animals and so on. It is used for a lot. And so control of that water is very important. Control of the water is important to prevent damage to life, society, and property. So if we don't manage water properly, um, we don't allow water quality to be sufficient in certain areas. We allow it to flood in other areas and destroy natural beauty, uh, society, and then people's properties. Well, that's going to prevent a lot of damage to uh, what we're trying to do here in terms of moving uh, society forward. So it's important that we manage control of water and don't do it inappropriately or else we might run into these problems. So water must be used for several beneficial purposes, but also conserved for future generations to come and managed properly. So what's the benefits of water utilization? One is municipal water supply, right? Anytime uh, you, you take a shower, you wash your hands, anything like that, we're using municipal water supply, um, you know, it's it's used in all parts of society and so it is very very critical to a societal function we're going to use it for irrigation a uh, hydroelectric power a lot of the hydroelectric power especially on the west coast runs on hydroelectric dams um, that can change as we go into the future but currently a lot of power runs on a hydroelectric power it's very clean it's very efficient and uh, that's how most of the power grid runs and power is used for pretty much everything in society it can also be used for navigation improvements when used for shipping along rivers and oceans and things like that so being able to utilize water properly can also help with navigation and shipping so what are some of the threats to water utilization because there are some threats to being able to use the water properly and that'll cause some damage to society so pollution is probably the greatest threat uh, to the utility of water and pollution control aka water quality management has become a key part of hydrology so how hydrology used to be done back in the day before things were really thought out and before water quality was really a big concern is sometimes rainfall would fall on a site and then we would just drain everything into the sound or the ocean or a local river, not really taking water quality into effect. Mostly because, you know, 100 years ago, there wasn't as much impervious surfaces and pollution out there as there is now. So it wasn't as big of a concern. It wasn't making that big of an impact. But as there are... More urban areas, more impervious surfaces, it's important to note when that water falls on a certain area or it's going through something, uh, it is collecting pollutants and how we deal with those pollutants um, is very important. And so it's also going to be part of your stormwater quantity and hydrologic analysis is that analysis of water quality. Flood control uh, can be used to preserve nature and damage is a major consideration. So we want to control flooding to make sure our natural environments don't get destroyed and uh, our societal environments don't get destroyed. And so minimizing that damage is also going to be very important. So there's a number of ways to control excess water. Some is using flood mitigation, using storm drainage designs and techniques, uh, bridges to build over bodies of water, uh, culverts to funnel some of that, and then sewerage to manage some of that um, sewer and solids that are created. <clears throat> and that's more of an aspect of environmental engineering, but it's also an important part of water resources engineering as a whole. So how can we conserve water in terms of water quantity? 
One is conserving the water supply, making sure we know where all the wa water is going and conserving that. Uh, using irrigation, the hydroelectric power, as I mentioned before, um, the navigation, and of course, conservation in terms of water quality and pollution control. So water resources engineering typically deals with the quantities of water. So we're trying to deal with you know, how much rainfall is occurring, what is the runoff that is occurring from this area. We're trying to manage these quantities of water appropriately, not too much, not, uh, you know, not too small, and uh, being able to uh, manage it for societal benefit. Water is not just a design question, but also includes societal and economic impacts. And if you think about your engineering designs, um, yes, if you could design something in a perfect world where there was no cost, no detriment to society, nothing, you could just design whatever you want. <clears throat> Well, our job would be pretty easy, but um, that is not always the case. Societal and economic impacts always play a role in engineering designs, and water resources engineering is absolutely no different. So when it comes to a design question, we need to also include those societal and economic impacts. We also need to distinguish water consumption and diversion. Sometimes we don't need all the water that is uh, raining on a certain area, especially an area like the Pacific Northwest where we get tons of rainfall. We're not actually utilizing all of that water usually. Um, we have plenty of water in the area. It's diverting the water appropriately using flood control methods to make sure the water drains appropriately, doesn't cause erosive flows, and gets back into the natural environment. Peak flows are often used to design projects for control of excess water, while volume is often used for long, for long periods. It's in the interest of design for the use of the water. So... Let's talk about water quality for a second. Water rights are incredibly valuable. If you ever heard the term water rights, it's who has the right over the specific water in the ground or water that falls through the air. Uh, <clears throat> these are often very, <clears throat> these are often very sought out, especially in in the United States, in terms of who has rights over the water and across the world, who has rights to certain bodies of water is is very important because it allows them access and use of that water, which is incredibly valuable. Water flowing into a stream is not available for every group of individual desiring it. So not all water is for use for everyone in public use, okay? It has to be assigned and directed in a certain way for societal benefit, and uh, having those water rights is very critical. So water rights have become considerably valuable, especially areas of scarcity. So there's some areas where fresh water is quite scarce and more desert environments, and uh, water rights are often fought over. They're even fought over um, in areas where there's plenty of rainfall. And all factors should be considered before diversion and consumption of the water occurs. We need to take into account all these impacts before diverting water and consuming it. So that was part two of our series, Introduction to Water Resources Engineering. If you're confused about different methods of engineering and stormwater design, why don't you download our ultimate hydrology guide and join our email list so we can send you more free goodies. It's free down below. Click the link and uh, you'll get that free guide there. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time.